this video, I create hideous Frankenstein monsters using nothing but children's toys, which I brutally tear apart and piece together until I have a monstrosity that we can all enjoy. Now this whole project stemmed from being invited to participate in the Monster Bash. The first and previous Monster Bash that was done was so fun to watch. And when I and some others were invited to Monster Bash 2, I leapt at the opportunity and so did everyone else. So this is the biggest collab I've ever participated in with a lot of participants. There's so much talent that has been a part of this collab and so much cool stuff to check out as a result. And the premise of the collab is simple. Everyone draws 20 pictures of monster bits on card size grid things and we share our pictures everyone prints everyone's pictures and we all randomly pick a handful of these monster bits to turn into something bits included heads eyes limbs tails horns but it's not limited to all that there were props and features and like just totally random weird things some of which I proudly contributed and my god it was fun and so with my and everyone else's cards printed and cut out I had some big stacks of cards. <laughs> There's a, a lot of random things that I could end up with. So we all jumped in a call to pick our bits. That really did not sound... Let's move on from that. <laughs> so we're all going to draw one card. Three, two, one, go. Oh no. <laughs> Ready to draw your second card. What do you got? Hey! I love it. <laughs> Third card. Ooh. Oh, I got one. Fourth oh, card. One Fifth this card. Is it's oh. a butt! I got a butt! <laughs> Did you get the butt? <laughs> yes! I got the butt! Yeah. Six. So these are the bits that I got, and this is the combination that I decided to put them in. Separating the fish head thing and the beak into a separate monster, because the actual, like, m the main monster looking face was just too good to not try and attempt. And obviously d adding fish head or beak is going to ruin that face. Now I had no idea what the outcome of this monster would look like, but I knew two things. One, it's going to be very hard to find all these bits from a children's toy shop. Two, I don't know what style it would end up in because there's some really like epic gnarly cool like monster stuff and then just, just some dumb stuff like there's a little butt with a love heart. So it just remained to be seen what the hell I could find at my local children's toy store. All right, something tells me we won't find that here, but there, there might be the butt, the teddy, the toucan. We probably won't find that and the fish. So I should find something that's like a teddy body plastic that I can cut. Sushi, little plastic fish. Sushi, sorry. Got a little plastic fishy. Okay, let's get organized. One thing at a time. Okay, we have Claw. This is my main claw option. We have butt. Gorilla butt. Tummy. A fuzzy tummy. Oh, and the, but there was this tum. So I don't know which one will be better. I might be better off with the cat tum. All right. The big chunky leg. Do you know what? The gorilla butt could be connected to the legs. I think we've got something happening here. This I actually got for the face. I think this might be my best bet. You've got the tiny teeth space, a nice big open mouth area, and those nostril holes would actually probably be pretty well positioned to be the eyes. So if I literally chop off the front of this dinosaur's face, that's kind of the head. So all of those are gonna go into one creature, but I've actually separated these to another creature using the little soy sauce fish and the seagull beaks onto the fish bodies and that gives us everything we need. So I leapt into creating my monstrosity having assigned the different parts of the different toys to the different parts of the monster and I had what I felt was a pretty solid plan but in even just trying to start and tear these things apart and cut them up I first of course uh, successfully and immediately cut myself. That's uh, this is something I decided to do to demonstrate to the need to be careful uh, and to not have your hand or fingers in the way of your cutting. I think it's really important that you guys see that if you if you're not careful you can hurt yourself. <laughs> That's what I'm demonstrating here is don't do that. 
you're welcome. <laughs> Anyways, I, I kept trying to cut these things up. Frankly, it was so hard because these are solid plastic. Like it's, you know, rubbery plastic, but still it's not easy to cut up and I leapt too aggressively into an unreliable way to do it. So I just thought, F it, I'm grabbing a Dremel. I chucked on a saw grinding bit and just melted these things apart until I had the parts and a way to connect them. And I mucked around with how they would look together using just blue tack with the cut up bits just to sort of see the shape, see the proportions and trying to get a pose, something that looks good. I decided to use the gorilla for both the butt and the legs, but the legs in my prompt are short and stumpy and fat. So I actually just cut the gorilla's legs off halfway down, which was good because the pose was a little too leaning forward anyway. So when I was testing the pose, I could of course see uh, what it would look like with the feet further back on the legs. And it all started to seem like it was pretty balanced. In fact, I felt like it could even stand upright. And so I glued it all together. And then I set about filling the gaps and texture with some green stuff sculpting. Sculpting and texturing green stuff is an awkward endeavor at the best of times, but when you have like five different areas on the model and it takes a while for this stuff to cure, so I wanted to try and sculpt it all at once. My hand kept unintentionally resting on an area that I'd already sculpted the fur to, so it was really frustrating because I had to get through the whole model, but I kept stuffing up something that I had to go back to, and when I went back to fix it, I stuffed up something else and ugh. Anyways, it required patience is what I'm trying to say. I wanted to make a mixture of both a terrain piece diorama that included the two types of monsters, but also something that I could use on the tabletop because I'm getting into my tabletop gaming and painting and mini stuff. And so I'd been working on the main monster on a cork base that I could stick to a magnetized uh, large hobby base. And then I used that as a foundation to carve a landscape around that hobby base that by slowly piecing together layers of cork that I textured and cut up and shaped into a little bit of a, a pond or lake entry could create an interesting scene that I could remove the uh, the monster from on his little base and use him on the tabletop for something. And this worked out really well. It, it, the layers lined up pretty nicely. I have a magnet in the actual base that so sticks there really strong. But then the overall texture and terrain effect looked really cool. And the foundation was really laid for me to then start working on painting and making look as good as possible. I left it to cure and dry over the weekend, came back and gave it a base coat of black and a zenithal in white ink. It's called zenithal because when the sun is at its zenith at the height of the day, the sun shining down creates obviously a, a, an intensity of light at the topmost of what you're looking at. So often with mini painting and terraining and diorama pieces, it's useful to paint with that sort of top-down light using ink or white spray paint. And this is as far as I'd got before I was due to have a call with my fellow collaborators to reveal my finished project. I hadn't finished my project. This has taken a lot of work and I had a lot of work yet to come, but I got it to a point where I was excited to be able to show uh, the monster design I had and see some of the amazing creations and pieces from my fellow collaborators. This collab has been so much fun and seeing how different people took such different and challenging prompts and made memorable and stylistically such unique artworks has been so inspiring. And honestly, the biggest treat of this whole thing is that you guys have so much to watch like now. <laughs> There's a playlist I'm going to link to in the description where you can watch all the entries to the Monster Bash round two. Go check it out and take this as an opportunity to find some channels and some crafters and hobbyists and artists that you may not have found before. See how they've taken the prompt and risen to the challenge and check out their other content. Subscribe while you're there. These are some really talented people and I'm honored to have been included and to have joined in their challenge. Yeah. Great. <laughs> uh, this is what I got. I couldn't oh. really... <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Like, make sure you have <laughs> wow, what a I'm butt. Sure to smooth out the butt. They've been so patient with me. Like they, the, the call that I wasn't ready for was the second call that they organized because I wasn't available for the first one. They've just been really welcoming and patient with me. So thank you everyone. And everyone watching this, please go check out their videos. There's that playlist. Go support some fantastic artistic creators. Like, comment, subscribe on their videos. And we can tell YouTube to give more love to hobby, art and creativity on this platform. Massive extra shout out, of course, to Trent uh, from Miscast, who's hosted and created this challenge. He's got a really creative and free-flowing art style and a really chill 
videos style you're gonna love. So go check him out and go check out the other creators in the collab. So back to my monstrosity. I started off by painting the terrain, the base and the fishies, mainly because I wanna really sink my teeth into the monster, so to speak. I really took my time with this. And I really wanted to create a lot of vibrant colors and some contrast, a really vibrant mix of gold and orange and a touch of magenta and the fishes. But then the monster himself, obviously he's looking pretty goofy. So I thought I'd just settle into that and go for a, a pretty goofy paint job with purples and pinks moving into the fleshy tones around the face. I started off by wet blending which was a way for me to like lay down those base colors but create some reasonably organic transitions and slowly but surely after the layers dried solidified these transitions and gradients and eventually got to, to some detailing and texturing. <laughs> I love this project so much, but I also love this process so much. And if I'm gonna be completely frank with you, YouTube does not incentivize me taking a week to work on a project like this. I love doing it, but on my main channel, it doesn't receive a lot of love because the algorithm punishes me for not uploading two or three videos a week at least, which is great. Like I love the type of content I make on this channel, but I also love really sinking my teeth into projects like this where I try new things and get experimental. And if you love seeing me do this, please go check out Tabletop Time. This whole painting process is part of the hobby that I've rediscovered and loved using the wet palette, using wet blending, doing the details, the different paints I use. All of this stuff is stuff I can freely dive into on Tabletop Time because that is what that channel is for. Getting into the nitty gritty of exploring dioramas, miniatures, tiny paint jobs and sculpting and 3D printing and of course storytelling and role play videos. All of that is on Tabletop Time. We're doing three to four videos a week. It's amazing over there. We're having so much fun and it's only getting better. So go check it out and subscribe to Tabletop Time. So here it is after my full paint job on my characters, my weird goofy monster, my weird beaked fish, and the mixture of a terrain piece that is also a miniature that can be removed and used on a tabletop. I love this result so much. Here it is, and my God, it's something else. <laughs> And here is my final piece. Whoa, whoa, ha, huh, what? That looks different to what you just saw, which was also very cool, but this is cooler. You know what I said? I like to dive into the nitty gritty and explore new things. I did that. So I've fully terrained and flocked and used grasses all throughout the thing. I've used UV curable resin and created this amazing splash effect that I love so much. And if you wanna see how I did all that and what I did, the video is there for you right now to go check out how I transformed the end result of my monsters into this final undulating beautiful landscape. Here's a little bit of a hint of the final product. The UV cure resin is a trip. Like it cures mid drip and it's really fun. And I am definitely gonna do more with that. But I'm also going to be definitely doing a lot more with minis and dioramas and role play. So go check out Tabletop Time and please subscribe. I just love too that it's both the terrain piece and a miniature and it works so well. Look at it! <laughs> I love my job. Once again, massive shout out to Trent from Miscast. Go check out the videos, subscribe to the people you want to follow. And of course, if you're new to this channel, subscribe because I love art, creativity of all kinds. I like this video if you had a good time here too. Again, it tells the algorithm that you want to see more of this stuff on YouTube and make sure to check out the other videos over there you're bound to enjoy. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'll see you later.